Hey there, YouTube. I'm just a bloke with a beer here. I actually finished my beer. And, uh, already had a smoke from my A. Fisher's Brewing Pipe. Uh, also had a couple of cigars already, too. But I'm outside the Fisher Mansion. As you can see, uh, they're the current A. Fisher Brewing Company is having an event today. They had one yesterday as well. Um, so they kind of have a beer garden set up in the back over by the carriage house. There's the carriage house. It's all boarded up now. And all the windows here in the mansion are boarded up. And the bottom level of the floor, of the, of the sorry, the bottom level of the mansion is all uh, open right now for people to go through and look but uh, the rest of the mansion is not open uh, it's actually in disrepair right now and the state's trying to raise 1.7 million dollars to restore it to its original Victorian style uh, look and condition but yeah the Fisher Mansion was built in 1893 and I believe the Fisher Brewing Company opened up in Utah in 1889 but before that, uh, Albert Fisher actually arrived in the valley and he worked for a, a little bit as a brewer for the Salt Lake Brewing Company. And the Salt Lake Brewing Company is one of the largest brewing companies, or was the largest, one of the largest brewing companies outside of Milwaukee, Wisconsin back in the day. They were uh, producing about 100,000 barrels of beer a year, which, uh, to put that into perspective, the top three breweries, or top... Uh, the top three biggest breweries in Utah together only produce about 30,000 barrels of beer a year. So, pre-Prohibition Utah um, uh, had a huge uh, brewing culture here. And a lot of those brewers were Germans, uh, German immigrants, and uh, Mormon pioneers that had uh, crossed the plains with Brigham Young. Now, the Mormon church and, uh, you know, a lot of Mormons probably don't uh, acknowledge that, uh, history nowadays because alcohol is uh, no longer allowed in the church but uh, yeah the breweries actually brought a lot of uh, business to the Salt Lake Valley and uh, actually helped develop a lot of these areas we're in the Popular Grove area now and next door is Rose Park and uh, the Glendale areas uh, as you can see I'm kind of dressed the 1910s, 1920s style suit. I used to do historical reenacting. I'm not so much active in that anymore. Anyways, uh, I thought I'd uh, show you guys a little bit of what's going on here. I would go to the back, but the, I got a big uh, bluegrass band playing in the back, so I didn't want the noise to kind of block out. <laughs> Uh, the video. Anyways. Yeah, the Fisher Brewing Company was an old old company. I think it opened up in 1889, like I said before, but it closed down in 1917. And the reason why is Utah, ahead of the rest of the country, outlawed alcohol in the state. Of U uh, in the state. But before that, they actually uh, introduced some anti-monopoly laws, which made it so that the breweries could no longer own the taverns that they owned throughout Salt Lake City. So in all in, all in one sweep, the state of Utah sacked a big part of the their tax revenue, and then the Great Depression, uh, sorry, Prohibition followed, and then eventually great, the Great Depression. But it's funny because I'm sure Utah felt it in their pockets, um, just the amount of money lost when they when alcohol could no longer be produced in the state and nationwide now uh, during prohibition, prohibition sorry and uh, I think in 1934 uh, when they got rid of prohibition they needed a certain amount of votes and Utah actually provided the final vote needed to get rid of prohibition so I, I wonder why <laughs> But the A. Fisher Brewing Company opened up, again, under Frank Fisher, uh, Albert Fisher's son. 
and uh, it continued up until 1957 when they sold it to Lucky Lager, a brewery based out of San Francisco. And Lucky Lager continued up into the 70s and then it closed down. But uh, right next door to the mansion, uh, there's a huge Questar building there, uh, Questar Gas. Uh, but that used to be the grounds of the old Fisher Brewing and they actually built it on the banks of the Jordan River. And you can kind of see the river here. Used to be a lot cleaner back in the days, but now uh, they dump a lot of crap inside the river. So not ideal for brewing at all. Um, but yeah, the brewery was built on the banks of the river and they used that because it was a clean water source to start brewing beer. And uh, one interesting thing about the, the building here, the, the mansion, is that uh, Richard K.A. Kletting, another German immigrant to Utah, actually designed the building. And Richard K. Kletting actually designed a lot of the historic buildings here in Salt Lake City. One of those being the state capitol, which was completed in 1915 or 1916. But uh, he did a lot of the historical buildings, the uh, commercial, uh, the Salt Lake Commercial Bank and Savings Building, which is now Martin's Italian Restaurant. And then the basement part, portion of the building is Oshuk's Pub and a sushi restaurant. Um, but yeah, the uh, Richard Kletting, another uh, German immigrant uh, to Utah. And there's been a lot of German immigrants to Utah that actually were architects and built a lot of the uh, Renaissance revival style of uh, buildings back in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Um, but they were good friends with uh, with uh, F uh, Albert Fisher, along with Thomas Kearns, and I'll talk to a little bit about him. He was a mining tycoon here in Utah, and um, his buildings are still around in downtown Salt Lake City, and the current mansion which the governor lives in uh, was the Thomas Kearns Mansion originally, and Kearns, Utah, obviously was named after him. But anyways, uh, this video won't be too long because I'm going to get back to the festivities and stuff. But I thought I'd uh, show you guys around uh, the mansion. Um, showed a little bit of the front of it. I'm showing the side of it now, the river and the location of where the brewery was. I talked a little bit about that. Um, one good thing about this event, though, is uh, because it is a beer garden out in the back that the event set up, they allowed me to smoke cigars and pipes here. And I uh, actually had a member, a couple of members of the Utah Pipe Smokers Club come through. Uh, one of them, uh, Andrew, our our club president, our current club president, actually came through and had a wonderful time before he had to go to work. We uh, were able to smoke a couple cigars and pipes together. But uh, yeah, that's all I, I got it for today. I uh, hope you guys have a good uh, rest of your weekend. It's Sunday here. I know some of you, Monday's already hit. But uh, yeah, you guys have a good one. Take care and happy smoking.